important to, uh, there is a toolbar that's available for this, and this is very useful to configure. So we can say perspective, configure toolbars, and what we want is author track changes. So we turn that on. We can say OK. And so now we get a toolbar. Now the first one is to actually turn tracking changes on. So I click here. And so now if I, um, we could say, we could add text here, and or we can um, we can delete text, and of course our highlighting shows it. Now I've configured this slightly differently so that um, my uh, when I delete I see red, and what we can do is go to manage track changes. Sorry, bleh. What am I thinking about? No, we use manage track changes just to um, find, uh, to accept or reject all of our changes, just do our usual um, cycling through. If we want to configure the way that things are um, uh, configured here for our change tracking, we of course come to op options, preferences, and we go editor, pages, author, track changes. And so here we can say, um, if you notice, the changes that I made, um, they have my name attached to them. We can, also, we can choose a custom color. For my insert, I'm happy with using the green, so I've got the insert set up. But I thought for deletions, I want to use a red, so I chose custom and then came here and chose red and then applied it. So let's just go through here, and we're just going to reject all these changes. So I like the way the document stands as it is. Creating cross-references. Now, um, when you create a cross-reference, of course, um, in order to have a cross-reference, you need a target. And in DITA, we, the targets that we use are the um, our IDs. So let's open another file. I'm going to open, uh, say, the toolbox. Actually, I'm going to open the toolbox. I'm also going to open tools. So when we um, insert a conref or when we do a cross-reference, we need to have an ID that we land on. So the ID we can set, we can click here on an element. We can go to the attributes and check our ID. There is no ID set on here. Um, there are no IDs on each of these LI elements either. Now, uh, we could go through and add an ID on our own if we wanted to, but XMantle also gives us a feature to actually automatically add IDs. And so to do that, what we do is we start out with the... Um, uh oh, now I've lost it. Um, shoot. Okay. Well, we can configure how we um, how we assign IDs, and then when we want to actually have XMetal assign the IDs, we right click on something and we choose generate IDs, and XMetal will actually go through and assign IDs automatically. And I've actually configured this so that um, an ID is assigned here. And the ID that I uh, configured actually has my initials on it, so that way I know that I was the one who created that ID if we ever needed to roll back. So, um, so now, continuing with the cross-references. So if we want to create a cross-reference to something, so here we have... Um, we're in this document, and we want to say, uh, I don't know, um, let's enter a new paragraph. For a list of tools, C, and so now we can come here to DITA and say link cross-reference. And from here, we now choose the file that we want to reference. So we want to reference the tool list. And so here's our concept. This is what we want to reference. And so we say, OK. 
And so now we actually have a reference. We've inserted a cross-reference two tools. Now, um, if I want to, of course, I can change this text. There. So now when we generate this document, this will be a clickable link, and I'll be able to link to that. Um, let's see. Can I show something? No. All right. So there's a cross-reference. Now, sometimes we want to actually create a conref. So we want to um, uh, reference actually a piece of content. We can do that in X. We can do that in Oxygen. Now, say after the body here. Um, we want to uh, say we want to just bring in that whole list of tools. We can do that this way. We can go to Dita. And we can say content reference, insert content reference. And so here's our tools. And we can say OK. And so now we've actually brought in that entire document, that entire topic, as a conref. So that's fairly straightforward. Did a content reference, insert content reference, and that adds content reference. I'll also call and point out that um, Oxygen uh, 11.1 uh, supports the uh, proposed DITA 1.2 standard, and so there are key content key references um, for inserting links. There are key references, and I'll show inserting a key reference in a minute. You need, uh, you need the DITA map um, set up in order to do the key reference. But I'm just going to delete this, clean up my file a little bit. Okay. So, working with data maps. Now, there are two modes of working with data maps in Oxygen. And the first is the data maps manager, which you notice is open here on the left. And the second is actually in the um, editing view, in uh, using the author mode or using the text mode. Uh, to or open um, a did a map using the maps manager you can't drag and drop you actually have to go to the file open dialog or click on the open icon and from here let's choose our hierarchy .data map file and say open now oxygen prompts us and says do we want to open this in the maps manager view and we most certainly do so we'll say yes now if you want you can choose do not show the dialog again to have that always happen, I like to leave this and uh, be able to choose uh, how I do it. So now we have our document opened in the Maps Manager. Now, if I wanted to open this data map in the uh, Map Editor, one of the nice things is in Oxygen, I can go between the two. I can now click on this icon here and I can open an editing view of this uh, data map. We'll close that for right now just to avoid confusion. So within the data maps manager, we can do a lot of things. We can rearrange our topics just by drag and drop. We can also use these arrows to um, move them around. We can also select a number of uh, topics, and we can move them all at once. We can demote, promote, 